in these spooky times. Today, I wanted to explain something I call the haunted painting effect, which is my name for a type of optical illusion often featuring art. So this is obviously not going to be serious art history. It's more something that's fun, and I hope explains something about how your eyes work along the way. Here's how the illusion works. If I put up a painting like this one, a very famous painting that you probably know, The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. And then I show you an animation like this one. And you stare into the center of it for 15 to 20 seconds, just fixating on that central point, allowing your eyes to become accustomed to the motion of the animation. And what will happen is that when I bring back the painting, it appears to come to life. Almost as if that figure up at the left there, Zephyr blowing on Venus, is actually animating the water and the hair and the fabric and the flowers in the canvas. The effect lasts for about five seconds before your eyes settle down. Now this is an optical illusion, so it works with all kinds of images. Even this one, a very static image, still life with cake. If we look back at the same animation and perform the same exercise now, staring into the center of the pattern, allowing yourself to become accustomed to the motion. And when I bring back the painting, once again, it will appear activated. Maybe this time it's more like you're very hungry, you're looking at the cake and you can't think about anything but eating the cake. Now, when this effect is talked about online, almost always people use the same example. Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night. Here are three examples of articles using it to talk about the effect. Now, it's a beloved painting, it's a very well-known painting, so it serves as a good example. But I think you'll see that if we look at the animation again, and once again, stare into the center of it, let it work its magic on us, that when I bring back the Van Gogh in a second, I think you'll find that it does really pop. It's just such a dynamic painting that it really works when it's animated in this kind of a way. However, one of the things that bugs me about all these examples is that they don't really explain what's going on, because what I'm calling the haunted painting effect has a name. Uh, scientists call it motion after effect, or I guess the real wonks call it MAE. This is a book about the motion after effect from MIT Press. You don't have to read all of this. The important passage is right here. It says, motion after effect is the appearance of directional movement in a stationary object or scene after the viewer has been exposed to visual motion in the opposite direction. And it's that last fact that I think is really interesting to explore. Here's a still from the animation. So that central field has motion going inwards, and that outer field has motion going outwards. And that means that the motion after effect is going in the opposite direction. You'll see motion out from the center and in from the edges. If you put these arrows over the Van Gogh, you get kind of a sense of how the animation is interacting with the painting, of what's going on in your eyes. Now that we understand how the effect works though, I want to show you the exact same Van Gogh again using a different kind of animation. All of the examples using the Van Gogh use a spiral pattern like this one. They're really illustrating something called spiral motion after effect, which is a type of motion after effect. And if we bring up the painting behind the pattern, I think you get a sense why. It's that swirl of the Milky Way there in the center. So if you look for 15 more seconds at the center of this pattern and let it work its magic on you, I think what you'll find is that because you've absorbed a counterclockwise motion and the spiral at the center of Van Gogh's painting is clockwise, that it does become animated in a particular kind of way. So it is a particularly useful painting for this effect. The difference may seem subtle, actually, but I think once you understand what's going on and you go back and compare the two animations, you will be able to see it. I think that once you understand how the illusion works, 
it's much more exciting because then you can play around with it in different ways. So for instance, I can take one detail, that big star right there, which is actually Venus, incidentally. And if I cover it with this animated target, and then you stare into the center of it for 15 seconds. Then because the animation is going into the canvas from the edge to the center, when I take it away, that one star, that one detail, will seem to come out at you while everything else stays still. As I said at the very beginning, I've been calling this the haunted painting effect. And so I was thinking to myself, what's the best painting I could find to illustrate its haunting potentials to you? And I thought of this one. It's called The Nightmare by the Swiss painter Henry Fuseli from 1781. So, if you allow yourself to look into the pattern at the top right, and allow yourself to get lost in its center, and let it work its spell over you, then I think you will find that when I take it away, the monster comes out at you. <laughs> so. There you have it. That is the haunted painting effect. Now you have the tools, hopefully, to play around with motion after effect on your own. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Goodbye.